So till now we have learned about object oriented programming concepts. Then we learned about uh, object oriented solid design principles. In the last video, we talked about the MVC architecture pattern. So finally, can we start coding now? No, we need to pay attention to one more thing before we can get our hands dirty in coding. That is design patterns or rather object oriented design patterns. Now you would ask, what is design patterns? So design pattern is nothing but a way of designing your classes, the relationship between your classes in order to solve your business problems in accordance with the object oriented design principles, object oriented design guidelines, right? The good news is this ways of arranging objects and establishing relationship between classes. This has been already done by fellow developers. All the developers who have coded before you uh, while creating their own respective projects, they have found a way to solve the design problems while adhering to design principles. So these are called as basically design patterns. The way fellow developers have solved the problems while adhering to solid principles or object oriented design principle are called as object oriented design patterns. And we are going to discuss popular design patterns one by one. And we are going to also program them. We are going to implement them using Java. Now you will ask second question. Why do I need to know these uh, design patterns or use these design patterns? Well, design patterns, look at it as somebody has already done some good work for you. Your fellow developers have found a way to solve the business problems while effectively using object oriented programming techniques, right? So you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to excessively plan or think about your design. You can learn from the experiences of your fellow developers. So that is one use. Why? Second, design patterns are kind of shared vocabulary between developers. Uh, for example, let's say you play guitar and there's one more musician from some another region who also plays guitar or for that matter, piano. And you are supposed to work together on a song. And that fellow comes to you and says, okay, this song is in C major scale or this song is in G major scale. So there's a shared vocabulary between musicians. That is the language of music. Similarly, design patterns is like a shared vocabulary between developers. So imagine you are a fresh graduate. You go to this software product company and you have been given a task to develop a certain functionality of the application. And when you are brainstorming about how to develop that, you go to this, um, you go to this fellow companion of yours and he says, you know what? You should use builder pattern or you know what? You should use factory pattern to solve this. So you should know design patterns. It's kind of like a shared vocabulary between good object oriented developers, object oriented programmers. That is one reason. Second reason, when you talk in terms of design patterns, you're thinking in the architectural level. You're thinking in the design philosophy way. You're not worried about uh, variables or uh, loops or functions or individual objects, but you are rather looking at the bigger picture, thinking, already thinking about how to create good software, how to write good programs, right? So it elevates your way of thinking while you are developing your applications. If you talk and if you think in terms of design patterns rather than in terms of niche level objects and classes, it's, it should be in the DNA of good programmers to always keep in mind all these design patterns while they are developing their programs, right? So with that, let's cut to the chase and let's start discussing our first object-oriented design pattern.